everybody. This is Jesse here with another segment of Ask Ron. We've got a wonderful group here to help everyone answer all these questions. How's everyone doing? Fantastic. Good. Hello, everybody. What we have here is a little portion of my real estate mastermind group that we just got back from lunch on. So I thought today I might want to get some help answering these questions. It might be tough questions. I need some help. So, <laughs> so uh, we're gonna, I'm going to rely on these guys and and uh, see if they're really all that smart. <laughs> I'm sure they will be. Uh, we'll start right in with Dolores Hills from Florida. Dolores. Hi, Dolores. Since I am married, even though separated under conventional funding, I cannot buy a house unless my husband is on the mortgage, which I don't want. Does that still apply with owner funding? All right. In other words, the question is, can I buy a house with owner financing without my husband? That's the question. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What, do you need, what do you need him for? You don't need him. Yeah. You're not applying for a loan anywhere. You can buy the house in your name. You're supposed to buy it in a land trust anyway. So, you know, make yourself the beneficial interest if you are separated from your husband and you're done. So you're not applying for any loans. And just for the record, if you're going to the bank and applying for a loan, it applies to you or anybody else. The one who's making the money that can justify paying back the debt is the only one who has to sign the note. But it is true, your husband would have to sign the mortgage uh, with you, but there's no liability in the mortgage. Liability is in the note. Perfect. That all for him? Fred Waldron from British Columbia, Canada. Hi, Fred. My temptation is to ignore FISBOs that are hard to get. My thinking is that ordinary people want ordinary homes, and I might have to find an unusual buyer for an unusual home. How can I get my head around around it looking at this as an opportunity? Looking at FISBOs as an opportunity? Well, you start by getting trained, I think, so you can understand what it is you can't get your head around. Wherever there are houses, there are people who need to sell them, and others who need to buy them. Always has been, always will be. Your job is to separate the, the, the few people, the minority of people that will be glad to take a monthly payment or allow you to make their monthly payment from all the rest that want all cash and want it now. Now, the obvious thing for you to assume is that everybody wants all cash, which they do, but that nobody will take terms, which is totally incorrect, and everybody here at the table can attest to that. That's what we do. But uh, you need to learn the business or you're never going to get your head around it. So that's my quick start real estate school. Get in that thing and we'll show you. And also we got a convention coming up in March, uh, March 31st in Vegas. Uh, probably heard about it by now. Get there. You're going to find a lot of people there that are doing this day in and day out. So you'll have plenty of evidence to show and plenty of people to talk to. Maybe some of them are from Canada. I have students all over Canada. And I love where you live in a beautiful place. Perfect. Thanks, Fred. Um, C.L. Arrington from Alabama is next. I'm a newbie, still working on my cold calling mechanisms. Mm -hmm. I see in the script you mentioned about getting the big three questions asked and answered. Mm -hmm. I read and reread the script, but couldn't locate these three questions. <laughs> what are they? What? Well, uh, ahead, uh, what's the least you'll accept uh, for, your, for your property? Uh, I assume you'll sell with nothing down. No, no. Or, I'm sorry, we usually buy with nothing down. Yeah, we usually buy with nothing down. And then uh, what's the least you'll take per month? That's your three scripts, right? The three big questions right there. Until you get the answer to those, you don't know whether you're going to build a house or not. Purchase price, monthly, and down payment. That's Most right. Three things that's, you need answered. That sounds like I need to go to training. <laughs> That's what I think. I wasn't going to say that. It sounds too much like a commercial. <laughs> Which I'm not. But I'll be on. Just, just saying. But no. It is in the script. You're just, you didn't know that was the big three questions. It's in the script that you're calling if you get a yes on B. That's the million dollar script. But we, well, even when you go to the no script, though, because you don't get a yes on B, it leads you back to the three questions that, Scott, uh, that uh, Todd just went over. By the way, this is Todd, he's one of our mentors. Happens to be in this group, he's from Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. Pronounce it right? Yeah. Minnesota. Yeah, we all pronounce it like that up there. 
All right. Jordan Mulford from Ohio. Oh, hi, Jordan. When selling a property on a lease option that I have purchased with seller financing, mm -hmm. is any of my buyer's monthly payments supposed to be going towards their principal down? Or is it just their initial deposit applied towards the purchase price? Woody, take it. Woody, answer this. He's over here asleep. <laughs> <laughs> that all depends on what you work out with, with the uh, seller. You can work that into it if you like. We normally offer that. Um, of course, we have a place we start, you know, with a, a particular figure. We start with the monthly rent, and if we want to give them credit towards the purchase, then we add that to that. So if we start at 700 and they want to get $50 a month credit towards the purchase price, we add that. That's the down payment assistance program you're talking about. Exactly. But you don't give them credit toward the purchase for the 700 No, right. Uh, no. I don't either, never have. They don't get any credit at all just for the rent. But if they want to pay extra, of course, that goes right toward their down payment as well as off the purchase price. Yes. Yeah. You, you always start with not giving them any credit, but I will admit that in the past, there has been times where I've given a, a little bit of a, a monthly credit, but it's only for a really large down payment. So one of the things that I'll, uh, if, if that question comes to me, if a buyer says, look, it's any of my monthly payment, go towards uh, the, the purchase price, uh, we just flat out say no. Uh, and if that sounds like it's going to be a deal killer and they've got $50,000 yeah. to put down, then be a little flexible on that, yeah, guys. I mean, give them, what's, what's $100 a month of uh, credit or $200 a month credit if they're giving you 50 grand up front? It's not that big of a deal. Start with nothing. That should be your baseline on every single deal and you'll find that 99% of the time you'll never have to give that credit. That's correct. Um, but uh, you know, be flexible on that if you need to secure a buyer for the property, you know, yeah. with a large down payment. Jeez, that's a good answer. Now that I'm thinking about it, I now that I'm thinking about it, I actually done that myself. It's just been so long ago I didn't remember. Yeah. In other words, somebody wants to give you a great big gob of money. Okay, you're going to be way a lot more flexible. And again, what if you give them a credit? Who cares? It's coming from the artificially inseminated equity that you add on to it anyway. So it ain't like you're giving up anything. <clears throat> All right. Actually, I've had a couple of times now, now that we're on this, where somebody comes in with a big chunk of money, and I, they force me to sell it to them with owner financing to get the big chunk of money, which I'm willing to do if that chunk of money is big enough. And you're going to ask how big, and I don't know, maybe 20% of the purchase price. You come in with that, uh, I'll sell it to them with owner financing because the truth is, if you collect 20% of the purchase price and then they want to, they can fight you. And most states, that 20% is the magic number that you collect more than that, they can force you to foreclose on them anyway. So I don't figure like I lose anything uh, with um, selling to an owner financing. And I'll tell you another thing that I did a lot is they come in with X amount of dollars, not 20%. And I'll say, listen, when you get to 20% down, which means you pay me extra per month, I'll convert this to a seller financing for you. But the truth is, I don't think I ever had anybody get to the 20% down on that field. I don't really recall, but it's a way to encourage them to pay that extra down payment per month. Uh, we've got, we call it a down payment assistance program. It's, and by the way, if they get to 20%, I'm, I'm happy to finance it for them. They, you know, they deserve it by that time. And keep in mind, me and most lease option tenant buyers are not going to actually buy the house. So, you know. What? Uh, yeah, believe it or not. <laughs> It's crazy. What well, 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 makes you think that? Experience. <laughs> Experience. <laughs> oh, so they're going to give me 20 grand and not buy? It does happen, yeah. That doesn't sound right. I need to know why. <laughs> why? It's not our job to figure why? it out. Why? I don't understand. Then you get the lease option it again? Yeah. That's Man. Three, three, four times. <laughs> That's amazing. That's how it works. The system. Okay, gosh. All right. The method goose. What percent of yours actually buy? Maybe Every 10%. Measure? Huh? Maybe 10%. 10%? Maybe. That's Maybe. a high, high yours a 10%. Yours? I'm a little higher. I'm, I'm probably about a third. A third? Yeah, it's just, well, we've got a really good mortgage person that uh, helps them and, and kind of pushes them. So you them. put them with a mortgage person? I put them with a mortgage person, but, I, but we step out of it. I mean, our mortgage person will continue to follow up okay. with them. And, and but you put them with a mortgage person. You put them with a mortgage person. Mortgage. So that's your goal. Created your own problem. Yep. Because with a third of them cash out, that'd be a problem for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do more than 10% either. Now look, let's, don't misunderstand this. 
uh, look, somebody gets in your house and they give you a chunk of money, they want to help them. If they, if anything they ask me to do, I'm going to do for them to help them buy. But the truth is, they don't ask. They just give you the money, live in their year or two, and they want to leave. Yes. I didn't do anything. In fact, I tried to give them incentive to stay. But if you've never done this before, you just are going to have a hard time understanding why people do the things they do. And But I, I don't put them with a lender. I don't put them in credit repair. I don't do any of that. I hand them the keys and set it, forget it. Because the truth is, I don't want them to buy. They kill my golden goose. But again, they buy, they deserve it. I'm going to try to help them. But about 10% for me. That means they're going out and they're getting their own loan on their own accord, and I have nothing to do with the process. Yeah, if they ask, then we don't mind helping them, but we're not going to hold their hand the whole time either. They're adults. So. Right. Yeah. And I, and I will, uh, the one thing I'll add to that is most of the properties that get cashed out on my end are sandwich leases. Sandwich leases? Yeah, so where, to where we've got back end profit coming only if we exercise our option to purchase. So we want to make sure that those ones get actually cashed out so we can capture the back end. But any of the ones that we have that we actually own, uh, I'm probably more along the line of 10%. 10%? Yeah. Okay, all right. How many houses did you do last year? Uh, last year, uh, 22 last year. 22? Yeah, 22 pre house okay. deals. What's your average front end non refundable deposit? That one I know it was 21,600. 21,600, okay. And that's in Minnesota? That's in Minnesota. All right. It's cold there. It's cold there. <laughs> it means he only gets to work about two months out of the year. Yeah. True? <laughs> well, not true. <laughs> no. All right, true. You mean people buy houses in cold weather too? All the time. People need places to live. Okay, by the way, if you've never been to Minnesota in the winter, don't go. <laughs> don't go. It's a miserable place to be in the winter. I swear. All right. Just like it here, it's miserable to be in the summer. We couldn't ask more beautiful weather today, though, could we? All right. You got more questions? I sure do. All right. Monique Brown from Alabama. Monique. Monique. I just started Pretty House Terms course, which I have wanted to do for over a year. Mm -hmm. So I'm super excited. My question is, and the scripts, there are, um, and the scripts have words, us and we, as if I have a team and I do not at the moment. Any suggestions on yeah, dealing oh with me, my... Come on, you change your thing to match your needs. Yeah. If you're not an us or a we, what would we do? I! Correct. All right. All right. And by the way, if you bought the terms course now and you haven't upgraded to Quick Start, you need to do that. You need to come see me live. I still teach these things 12 times a year, and they're going to give you a thousand dollar credit for that course you bought towards the Quick Start. They've got some other bonuses in there. You might want to get a hold of my office. In fact, 800 567 6128. 800 567 6128. Tell them that you were watching this. And I told you to call and give you give you a killer deal on getting upgraded to the Quick Start and get in there and, and see me. I'm going to Dallas next week, and I don't know the schedule, but I'm all over the country. And if Great. you're and, and if you're in the mentoring program too, the other thing that we tell uh, our students is you can say uh, us and we why because you have a mentor. You and we we don't refer to ourselves as mentors in that situation. You can just say my partner. In that, yeah, right? right. You can always refer to us as credibility. So if you've never bought a home before, yeah, my partner and I. You know, last year we did you know twenty two deals. Doesn't matter if if I did twenty two and you did zero. They never ask that. They don't care. Right. You Correct. borrow from your mentor's credibility, and if we need to get on the phone with the sellers, we can absolutely do that. And, and the mentor doesn't have to be your partner now to do that. No, nope. but. You're referring to the higher authority, correct? And by the way, in the mentoring, your mentor will be on the phone while you're in the house. Put the seller on the phone with your mentor, and they will do all the talking for you. That's one of the beautiful parts about our mentoring. And so, if you, when you call the upgrade, talk about the mentoring as well, because you get a package deal that way. And, and if you don't, if you're going to do this business, you're going to need a mentor. We all have them. So. That's right. Any more? All right, one more. It's a good one. Toby um, Belknap from California. Toby. In a sandwich lease, when your end buyer qualifies for a loan to cash out, who pays the closing costs? I knew that was coming. But more importantly, what is the process? I'm going to let you tell them. You're going to do a sandwich lease. Mm -hmm. Now they go get a loan. Okay, what's the process of getting that property transferred from that seller to your buyer? What do you do? Uh, so me personally, uh, what we do is... Uh, so I have a relationship with the seller. My end buyer does not. 
Um, so we will actually create a purchase agreement because at that point they're exercising their options. So you need to create a purchase agreement with the terms of that option agreement, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we will, so I will actually create that purchase agreement and I will have uh, the end buyer sign it as the buyer. And right. then I go back and I get that signed uh, by the seller. Yep. And then we give that to the closing attorney. And then the, the money in the middle that is ours, the difference between what we had agreed to pay the seller and what the buyer purchased it for, that comes back to us on the closing statement. And you can have your attorney call it whatever you want. Ours just calls it an option release fee. Option fee, our consulting fee, and not commission. Yep. So no, no, not commission. license to do commission. It shows right on the closing statement, the check comes right from the closing. Hey, that's exactly what I do. Okay. Where'd you learn this stuff at? Uh, huh? Some guy named Ron. Okay, now, remember now, when you're leasing a house with an option to buy, this conversation needs to be had with the seller at that time. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, when it's time for this thing to cash out, I'm gonna come back to you and we're gonna get a, a different agreement. So you're gonna be selling it directly to my buyer, which is fine. Now, well, we charge us in dollars. Okay, we leased it for 200,000 and we sold it for 250. And um, I don't know, they gave us $25,000 down. So we're still owed 25 because the seller's owed 200. So the seller's payoff will show in the closing statement at 200. The 25 that we got for the down payment will show has already been received, so it's a credit. And so the other 25 will be distributed to you as a consulting fee or option fee. Probably an option fee is the right thing to call it. It's whatever your loan processor that's talking to this lender thinks it ought to be called because maybe you see, the lender at that point won't even know there's an option that you, that, well, actually they might know it because the lender's going to want to see a payment history for rent mm -hmm. for that time that buyer has been in that house. And at that point, it. they'll find out that this person has been uh, leasing it all this time. And by the way, that really is in their favor because now they have a track record of making this payment and that's what lenders love. So it'll come out at that time. So I guess it won't matter what you call an option fee or consulting fee or whatever. And that's how it's done. You get paid right from the closing agent. Awesome. I think you um, answered Toby's question great. Okay. And that's all I have for you. Okay, but Toby, remember one thing, please, sir. Before you go lease all of you, or before you go leasing the house with an option to buy, just remember, you can probably own it just as easy if that's the way you approach the seller. I'm always rather own the house. So I'll buy it on a wraparound mortgage. Very reluctant to lease it. I have total control. Plus, the day I close, I get to start depreciating the house. You can't do that with a lease option. And even better, now when I get ready to sell it, I'm the seller, I deed it to the buyer, not go back to the seller, don't need seller's permission to do anything, so I don't have to deal with that on the back end. Too many people are leasing it just because they don't ask to buy it. And I'm telling you, the seller would rather sell it to you than lease it to you. But leasing seems like the easiest option. It's only in your mind, in your mind. If you ask a seller if they'd rather lease it or sell it, they're almost always gonna say, I'd rather sell it. Well, good, I wanna buy it. Well, we'll buy it on a wraparound mortgage. Now the downside is, you're gonna have to pay closing costs. Okay, <laughs> some states that's not a big deal. Some states that's a really big deal. So if I lived in a state like, um, give me a high closing cost today, Maryland. I lived in Maryland and I got to pay 3% of the sales price for closing costs uh, because my seller's not getting any money. Now, if the seller was getting money, it can't come out of theirs, but if they're not getting money, it's gonna, I'm gonna wind up having to pay it. I'm probably gonna be more prone to do a lease option there instead of coming out of pocket with that 3%. On the other hand, if I get a lot of equity, I'd still rather pay the 3% because you're gonna get it back in depreciation in a year or two, unless you have absolute total control of the property. So common sense, and math are applied to these things. And that's why a mentor is so important to you. They can help you, guide you through these things until you, until you, until you actually understand it. And, and, and let's be honest, you're not gonna understand all of it in the beginning. The only way we're gonna get good at anything is first we gotta start by being very bad, and that you probably qualify there, and then get better as we go. And you know, everybody sucks when they start, right guys? Yeah, absolutely. Did you guys suck when you start? Oh yeah. yeah. And, you know, I know them, they, they still do, really. <laughs> they suck a little less. They don't suck as bad as they, they used to. Less. All right. In fact, this whole meeting, this whole group is about how to suck less <laughs> and grow faster, which is, I guess, what we're all about. So anyway, uh, 
that takes care of it for now. Guys, if you haven't registered for the summit yet, please get registered. By the way, this virus that's going around, come on, give me a break. How many cases of this virus are there in this entire country so far? Anybody know? Somebody just told me 800, I don't know. It's very minimal. Huh? It's small. Now think about it. There's 365 million people in this country and there's 100 people with this virus. Give me a break. <laughs> That's no reason to do anything different than you're currently doing. So because we had a few people cancel the convention because of the virus. No, 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 no. You'll probably get the virus staying home. We won't get that. Coming to you. Geez, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. No, I, I don't wish that on anybody. But come to this convention. It's so important for you. It's so critical to your success. You're going to meet the right kind of people. And, 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 and it's just loaded with information that you can go home and implement immediately. Plus, bring leads and we'll get you deals. And forget the virus. It's going to come and it's going. In fact, they got it pretty, they're getting it under control from what I'm watching right now. Uh, it won't be around that long. So it's just another thing we got to go through. It'll have an effect on the economy, sure, but it'll be short term, fortunately. But do not let this thing influence your decision. You cannot stop living because 100 or whatever people in this country have got the virus. Yeah. All right? See you next week. Peace.